the frauds, the only thing out of the frauds, we had a couple of scams that were almost identical. And the, the first one, the victim received a call from somebody claiming to be with XL Energy, said that their bill was like three months past due and said that they needed to give uh, or purchase a money pack for $500. They told them to go to a, a gas station, purchase this money pack, and then the, the person ended up giving them the, the information, the numbers on that. And then the scammer said they needed more money and that's when they kind of realized something might be off. Uh, they hung up with that scammer, called a separate number to XL Energy, found out that their bill, bill is current. We had another report, almost exactly the same thing, but it was a person claiming to be with XL Energy, said that they had to pay some money within 45 minutes or their power was going to be shut off. Uh, that one, they were given instructions to get money packed for $500, and almost the same thing. Once they paid that money, they said they needed more money, and then they realized that the victim realized it was a scam. So uh, this is one that's popped up over time, uh, over the years. And I guess any business, any utility that calls people that they're claiming that they owe money, don't go on that word alone, especially if they're telling you to get a money pack, a Bitcoin, a reloadable credit card, any of those things are red flags. Get some information, get some contact information, hang up and call a different number, uh, whatever the main number is to, the, uh, to that business or entity, and then confirm with them if there is a bill, if it is past due. But don't buy this stuff, don't send information. Uh, it's unfortunate, but the scammers are good at what they do and, and are able to convince people that this is real. Now, from, uh, what you guys know, in cases like this, are the scammers uh, local or are they still like out of state, out of country? Most of the time, I'd say the vast majority of the time, it's probably either out of state or out of country. Uh, it really kind of depends. But these, that's why they're using these tactics because if they're getting this, these card numbers, they can be used anywhere in the world. And so there's, they're virtually untraceable. Um, it's pretty rare that we have people that are requested to send money or checks to places, but at least there's something that we might be able to follow up on. But uh, by and large, I'd say almost all of the scams that we've encountered, none of them seem to be local. The, the suspects are all from different areas or different countries. thousand dollars between the two different scams yeah 500 each the other ones were the the law enforcement ones where they yeah the, this is different it, I, mean, I mean there's really no way of knowing if it's the same people that are using different scams I, I think most of the scammers kind of have their one little niche that they stick to um, but it, we don't know. I mean, there's just no way to know if it's the same people or different people. Right. That's. I mean, that's really what it comes down to. Is just double check to make sure that you're not going to be a victim of this scam. You know, that's that's the best thing I can say. If people call you and threaten you or try to convince you there's a bill that's passed or you know, the warrant or jury duty, whatever it is, and they want some credit cards or money pack or Bitcoin, that's a scam. I mean, just flat out, nobody's going to be receiving payment with an Apple iTunes card or a money pack card. I mean, the businesses just don't operate that way. <clears throat> Do you have the age of the victims in this case? The age, yeah, let's see, so... <clears throat> the first victim is 61 and male. Sorry. Yep. The second one is also 61 male. <clears throat> 